Yes. Like you, got, you got the, the new yeah. shoes video guy squeaking on <laughs> Instagram. Like, I, I, I'm never going to move like yeah, that. Yeah, true. I only slide on clay because the surface does it for me, you know? So I'm not, I'm not putting myself in that yeah, position. So. But at the courts, you're very, like, locked in and serious guy. Like, what brings Benjamin Locke joy? It doesn't look like much. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Change Over Podcast. Um, if you're new to the channel, my name is Jody McGinley. Um, to my right is go host Justin Roberts. We're a couple of professional tennis players. I'm ranked about 330, roughly, in the world in doubles. Justin is ranked roughly in the 900s, um, but he's been a little bit unlucky with injuries. Um, we're here in Peru at some futures, and we have a fun episode today with some spicy topics. So. Uh, we're looking forward to it. And today's guest is a Zimbabwe Davis Cup player. He's ranked currently 396 in the world in singles, 163 in doubles. He was a 2024 African Games singles and doubles finalist. He's won about a zillion futures and challenges combined. And I figured if you can't beat them, join them. I lost to him last week in doubles, so he was my partner this week. Um, our guest is Ben Locke. Thanks for joining us, Ben. No, pleasure to be here. Appreciate it. Today was your day off, right? Um, yeah. You had a run to the semis of singles and... Uh, semis and doves. Sorry. Too. Yeah, semis of singles and doves. So it's yeah. a lot of times this week and uh, day off today, what'd you get up to? Absolutely nothing. Didn't do anything. <laughs> I tanked it. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. I just, uh, I think I've played so much tennis over the last couple of weeks and um, probably not like the physical aspect, but you guys know like mentally getting up every morning, like I'm going to go compete, you know? Yeah. And... Uh, Obviously, um, I was happy with last week. Um, lost two tough matches um, in singles and in dubs with um, Jody. But yeah, uh, today was good. I just watched a couple of movies. I touched base with the family, so I just tanked it. Is that normally what the days off are like on the road? Um, no, normally you want to get in the gym, do the right thing. You know, but <laughs> today I had no motivation. I was tired. <laughs> yeah, so hoping for a later start today for the uh, for next week. Um, but yeah, I'll get back at it tomorrow. You didn't want a tourist to see the city? Um, you know, I thought about it. Actually, where I'm at, this, this city is pretty cool. It's surrounded by like three volcanoes. Yeah, and there's one volcano that uh, you, you look at from the one plaza I'm staying at. It's called the Godfather of the city. Okay. So I went there, had an ice cream, chilled a little bit. <laughs> there were a bunch of tourists, um, so I guess... Yeah, there's That's, a lot of tourists here all around. Yeah, are, yeah. For those of you who don't know, we're like in the middle of the city, I guess. There's a bunch of cars and like people walking around. There's a lot of tourists. Like when I was flying in, I thought that it looked like the middle of nowhere. All I saw was Dude, like same. dust outside. And same. Then you get to the city, there's so many people. I don't know. I've had a couple of people message me, oh, you're an Ira Keeper. You should go do this, go do that. So really? there's, yeah. Like two hours away, there's, you know, these, I don't know, salt pans and I don't know. But, you know, for us, Tennis players who travel so much, probably the last thing you want to do is yeah. get on like a tourist bus. You know? <laughs> it's true. To be honest. So. Bro, true. What, uh, what makes you like happy, bro? Because like, I don't know you very well, but at the courts, you're a very like, locked in and serious guy. Like, what brings Benjamin Locke joy? It doesn't look like much. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. Um, no, when I'm at the tennis center, uh, you know, I like to get in and get out, yeah. like to maximize my time there. Um, you know, I've learned to, I mean, I've been on tour for a while, so I've learned to try and just, um, you know, maximize every second that I can, whether it's, you know, on court or with the physios or whatever the hell I'm doing at the tennis center. Mm. Um, but what makes me happy, I love playing golf, being with my friends, uh, family. Um, when I can go out and have a good time, I think it's always good to oh. reset. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd be surprised, yeah. I went, moving I, in or no? I, I went to FSU, man. So <laughs> we know we know all about that. Are you uh, from Africa? Can you dance? Or no? <laughs> oh, yeah. We're born like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's mandatory. <laughs> you know, it's funny. We talked about the Justin and I on, I think it was after we practiced on the first day. Yeah. Um, You know, I obviously don't know you very well, like he said. Mm -hmm. And it's always kind of tricky playing with someone that you don't know. Yeah, and Justin was like, he seems very serious. Huh? Like the practice was like, we're gonna do this, and then we do this, and we do this, and it was like very thorough, and we did it like to good quality, did it well, and then practice was over, and we were done. You know, so I was like, I was a little bit on one hand, I was like, wow, it's gonna be 
like a good week, very thorough and stuff. But then I was like, I don't know how much I'm actually going to get along with Ben. If it's, a, <laughs> if it's like all this. And then I don't know if you remember when we were playing in the semis. Like About the music. Music was you playing. The music, yeah. You were bobbing your head. You're like, yeah. and I was just there and you're like, you don't like music? And I'm like, no, dude, but I'm, I'm locked in. I love music. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Catch but, me in a different, uh, outside the tennis center, you think yeah. twice. But it's probably a good balance, right? You can't have two people just like wound up the whole time that we may get no, too no. serious. You exactly, know? exactly. Well, we got, always good to keep it lighthearted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, should we get into some stuff, Justin? All right, so I got some things here for you. I want you to tell me if they're over or underrated. Okay, okay, over or under, yeah. over or underrated. Got yeah. it. Watching your matches back, um, or training sessions, anything like that, just watching yourself on tape. Oh, I'd say training sessions are um underrated. Probably watching the matches is a little bit overrated for me. Why would you say that? Um, because I think it's so situational and, you know, the footage we have, it's from one camera view. So you, you can't, you can't really see the spins on the ball, the heights, the depths. I mean, you can see it a little bit, but, um, I don't know. I don't know about you guys. I'm sure you do, but I, I like live every point. Like when yeah. I finish the match, I can literally go back and it. remember every single point, how I felt, really? yeah, how I felt, what I thought about, um, guessing, you know, where he's going to serve. Did I lean this way? Did I lean that way? So I I, I think I, I do a pretty good job of analyzing the match myself. I think what's um, underrated is your coach watching okay. your match because it's a fresh set of eyes. I mean, we've all seen ourselves play and hit millions of balls. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it's good to see, um, to get a different a different opinion, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Going on yeah. yeah. So I, I love it when my coach or my parents would watch and they would tell me something. I'm like, oh, you don't really see that, you know. Mm. Um, obviously, if there's been a match where I completely messed up or I did something really good, I'll go and see and look at that, yeah. you know, that moment in the match. Yeah. Um, but to watch the whole match, I probably don't watch that much. I would, if I'm going to spend time watching tape, probably be for my opponent or next match. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you said practice is underrated. What did practice work? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things you can learn in practice. Um, I don't know. I mean. I've obviously practiced with Jody a lot. I've seen you practice. And I think, you know, I think practice translates into the match court. So, like, I, I love to just sometimes watch videos and look at my technique mm-hmm. um, because it's difficult. You know, if when you're in a match, you're under stress. If your opponent is blasting a ball at you, you're not going to be able to set up correctly, you know. And so you're kind of doing the emergency technique. But when you've got time in practice, what does it look like? You know, your footwork. And I always try to see you know, the things I work on changing my body. And if I'm able to do that in practice, when it counts in a match, hopefully I can do it. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. yeah, I would, I would agree. But I do think when it comes to the matches, watching them back, I would say, you know, same as you were saying, like, I think it's underrated in the sense that when you had like a good performance, you can actually go on that uh, ATP app, because mm-hmm. when you play challenges at least, and you can kind of, uh, I like to sometimes screen record and then, like, put together, like, a longer video of me, myself, playing well. So, like, if I'm struggling, sometimes I will, like, go back and watch that video. I think that that, that can be... Like, useful. like, mental reinforcement? Yeah, yeah show, that's like, good, man. Yeah, because also sometimes when I play, I feel like it's worse than it actually looks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, always, always, always. You're like, oh, man, I, I, I messed up. Well, I, yeah. I wasn't feeling the ball good, and then you watch it. I was like, oh, play you're like, pretty... Dude, actually, yeah. it's looking pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel the same way. I, I, I felt that way last week in our doubles. So like, I thought yeah. I was... First of all, I watched a little bit of you and yeah. uh, and your partner last week before I played yeah, you guys. Yeah. And then I played the match and I felt a certain way about it. I rewatched the match and it changed my opinion a little bit about how I felt. So I was like not as hard on myself. Afterwards. Yeah, I, so I think I, there is value to rewatching also your own matches too. For sure. Depending on the situation. Obviously. For sure. I agree 100%. Yeah. yeah. Next one for you will be... Do you think that having or your locker room presence slash reputation is over underrated? Like how people view you? No, definitely underrated. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I don't know. I mean, I will talk for like other people. If I if I know someone's, um, you know, talented but lazy and maybe a little bit, you know, let's say wild off court, I'm going to go into the match like feeling confident because I'm like, okay, this guy may be talented. He may be good, maybe ranked higher than me but I'm going to extend the match and let's see, maybe he cracks mentally and you, you kind of go into the match telling yourself these things and I think it like kind of builds you up. Whereas we've all played players when you're about to go into the match and you're like, okay, I'm ready, I'm feeling good, but 
it's gonna be nails yeah. like this guy ain't gonna give me a thing and this yeah. guy's gonna bring it and you're like on edge you know because you know you have to you have to bring it today yeah. otherwise you're done yeah. you know so i think i think it's good i think you don't want to be someone that you're not and portray something you know different yeah. you know it's always good to be yourself i feel like but um, i think those small things maybe matter you know one point that's what i think mental mental i agree 100 percent. Yeah. i think I mean, obviously, this is a very extreme example, but guys like Rafa and Djokovic and stuff, sometimes yeah. they get an early lead because of their name, because of their, their I guess, the word people use now is aura. You know, like exactly. they have that exactly. like presence about them that make people think, oh, yeah. shit, I have, to, I have to play well today. You know, so I think I think that is important. I agree, it's underrated. Yeah, like I, I'm sure there's, there's, in all our careers, there's been like one match where you, you I mean... If you're playing bad and you go into a match and you're not in good form, you're a little bit tight because you're like, I'm hoping to find good form, you know. Mm. But sometimes when you're actually playing well, you're feeling good, or you've made, you've won a couple of matches, and you're getting ready to play, and your opponent's there, and you know this guy, uh, you've seen him working so hard on, you know, in the gym or outside of the, you know, kind of tennis environment, and then I think that 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 for me that plays a role. And you hear all the other players talking about, like you were saying with Rafa, like. When they're in the locker room waiting to go out there, and he's got yeah. that you know samurai jumping around, yeah. bandana yeah. thing, yeah. and then jumping around, yeah. you can hear his music. Yeah. He's locked in. He's, he's locked, locked in. Be a long, yeah. Long day. Oh, yeah. A quick one if he, if he can. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. it's true. Last one I have for you is uh, playing a quote-unquote aggressive tennis when trying to return serve or trying to break serve. You think that's over or underrated? No, I think that is underrated. Although, because mm, if you think about it. Um, when you're trying to break serve, as a, if you're the server, what don't you want? You don't want the guy putting you under pressure mm -hmm. because now you're thinking, damn, if I'm rolling in a second serve, he's munching it and I'm on the back foot. Or is it that puts pressure on your first serve? Then maybe that lowers the percentage down on your mm -hmm. first serve and that's just a knock-on effect. And I think as the returner, if you're constantly squeezing, I mean, in this room, we all have pretty good serves. So like how many times are you going to get broken a set? maybe once hopefully yeah. hopefully, hopefully yeah, none yeah. <laughs> and you're the breaker or yeah. you're breaking or or maybe once mm. so as the returner if you're breaking if you're breaking twice in a set i mean that's a routine match mm. i think in in it depends what conditions you're playing in but i think if you're if you're squeezing the server the whole time and the server's getting up there to serve and suddenly all his targets look so much more difficult yeah. and smaller to hit yeah. you know i think it's and a classic example is like Let's just take, I think, three best returners, probably Agassi, Murray, and Djokovic. And they're just on you, man. You know, you have different style of returners, you know, watched Alcaraz play. Um, he can do it all. This guy and he's he's playing at the base. He's yeah. playing at the, the yeah. linesman at the yeah. fence. And the next one, he's inside the, the in baseline. The room, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just at the cafe around the corner. Yeah, right? just <laughs> munching your yeah. serve like it's nothing. Yeah. But, yeah, I think playing aggressive on returns also... Um, I think it also just takes a little bit of pressure off your service games because you're not playing tight return mm -hmm. games. You know, you're loose. The but don't you think there's fun. a value in not missing returns as well? Like, oh, I'm yeah. sure there is. Like, I'll give, I'll like, I'll give you an example. Like, um, played Chris Eubanks last year, Stuttgart, first round qualies on grass. Chris is a great serve, you know. Chris doesn't hit 220 kilometers all the time, but he's hitting 200 and he's he's got a damn good serve, you know. Yeah. And at that guy, I was literally just like, okay. I'm going to hold backhand grip, forehand block the whole match, and I'm just going to put as many returns in the court as possible. If he picks them off and hits winners, like too good. Too good. But for me, uh, for me personally, for me to have that mentality is probably you know against a good server like Chris, who's I think his stats are top ten on tour. Mm -hmm. You know, so against most servers, I like to try and play aggressive and get on the front foot. Yeah. But that's 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 the way I, I see it. Yeah. 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 There are different ways, I guess, to go about breaking. I think a lot of times I would say for me, breaking serve is more about like let's say closing the court and uh -huh. making it difficult for the guy to, to open it. So yeah. as as early as I can get back on at neutral, the better. And then I kinda like to say like okay, put all the pressure on that side. Like, I'm going to try to play, let's say, not necessarily down the middle, but try to deep through the baseline. Yeah. And if you want to win points and you want to hit winners, you're going to have to take the risk and to 
to try to spread the court. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is, I guess, a different way to, I guess, ask the question of the opponent. You can, I guess, break them down through, like, like I said, a thousand cuts, like, by just putting a bunch of balls in the court <laughs> yeah. and, and running. Like, probably yeah. I would do more. And then, yeah. or you can... You, you see, but like, like, put, you, but like, you, but like, you're yeah. you're super fast. Yeah, like you got, you got the the, the new yeah. shoes video guy squeaking all over <laughs> Instagram. Like, I'm, I'm never going to move like yeah, that. Yeah, true. I only slide on clay because the surface does it for me. You know, <laughs> so I'm not I'm not putting myself in that yeah, position. 100%, 100%. So I, I think it's I think it's so like depending on your game style and what um you know what what gifts you have as a tennis player. 100%. Yeah, exactly. Thank sure. You. Let us know in the comments down below what you think is the more effective. If you think he should be more aggressive on seconds or if you do like Justin and death by a thousand cuts. So let us know. <laughs> but um, Ben, also, for those of you, those of you who don't know, if you look at his uh, calendar, his schedule, and he plays a lot of tournaments in altitude, is that on purpose? Do you try to schedule those conditions because it's what you, yeah, you like I mean, to play? Yeah, I mean, I grew up in altitude. So, I mean, oh, I, um, about 1,500 meters. Okay. Yeah, so not crazy high, but it's high. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up playing there. So, I just feel that um, naturally I have good ball control. And then obviously with my height and serve, um, you know, you get a lot more free points. Um, that being said, I mean, I, I went to school at Florida State, so heavy and slow. And I had a great career there. And I, I love the feeling. And I trained in Barcelona. And I love the feeling of just being able to hit out and rip, mm. you know, and you're just able to accelerate and also, um, you know, it's a catch 22 in altitude. Yeah. Like, I mean, your serve in doubles this week, you know, when you're bombing it, they're touching it, it's flying out, you know, yeah. but when you bomb it and someone squares the return, <laughs> that thing comes back quick. Yeah. Like there's a true. couple, a couple of times I was at the net and you bombed a serve and the next minute the ball's coming in my face. <laughs> you know? And in sea level, maybe you'll still hit the same speed serve, yeah. but the return will come a little bit slower. That's true. So I think it just, I mean, the biggest thing for me is that I feel I'm able to control the ball a bit better than, than right. most, just because I've played so many years in altitude. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. True. So what was the decision like moving to, to Spain to train there? And is it difficult to get that set up or how does that work? No, I don't think it's difficult. I think you have to find the right environment for you. Um, and I tried a few places before. Um, and I think if I had to give advice, I think the most important thing is you go somewhere where they, they, they know you. They know how you are. And I think that's more important because if a coach is trying to just teach his style, he's just going to make the same player over and over again, you know? Mm -hmm. And every player is different and like, he's going to bring something different. You'll bring something different. I bring something different. And I think um, what I found is that the place I practice in um, Barcelona at in Tennis Academy and my coach is Albert Portas is he's able to look at a player and say, right, what does this guy do well? Let's work on those things and what type of game style is he going to play? At the same time, where is he vulnerable? Let's go knock out those, those sessions as well. So, um, yeah, I think the main thing is coming from Zimbabwe. We were so far away from everything basically i mean we're in the right at the bottom of africa and there's no tournaments there so i wanted a place where i could get on a flight in one or two hours play a tournament here or there mm -hmm. and uh, especially after the covid um kind of era there was just nothing happening and europe was open so i was like i gotta go there and um yeah it's it's been great um obviously i play so many tournaments a year <laughs> you know there yeah so i mean <laughs> when i when i am there i love to do my pre-seasons there and then during from about may until now or even september um when you got all those tournaments in europe it's just amazing that if you have a great week good keep going if you have a bad week that yes, night sir. on a flight with my coach the next morning and we're getting ready to go yes. you know so i think also just not being on tour the whole time with your bags, you know, is is uh, plays a big part yeah. as well. And what was it like in Zimbabwe growing up? Obviously, it's not the biggest tennis nation and that sort yeah. of stuff. And Africa as a whole doesn't have as many tennis players as like Europe uh -huh. and the US and Asia and stuff. So what was it like for you as a tennis player growing up, um, coming up uh, younger in your life? Yeah, I mean, I would want to say probably maybe, I mean, you guys are also from nations. I don't know where you guys grew up. But probably, you know, the tennis history in your guys' country, I'm sure you had great players as well. Zimbabwe did. We had, um, you know, Byron and Wayne Black. They were Byron was 20 in the world, you know, beat Sampras, quarterfinals at Wimbledon. They we were, didn't have any of those. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we well, we got... Ro Roger Smith. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mark knows. Yeah. yeah. So you Mark know what I mean? Like you, you'll have some, you'll have some, <laughs> yourself, okay, you'll have some names. <laughs> I mean, maybe you're going to set the history for, right. yeah, for, for, for your, yeah, for your names, island. Bro. Yeah, some names. But I would say that, um, yeah, it's difficult. Um, Zimbabwe and Southern Africa, South Africa in general is pretty sports crazy place. They love all sports, you know? So I grew up playing all sports. Uh, I came from a tennis family. My parents both played tennis. My dad played Davis Cup. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'd say it was nice that, you know, you kind of become a bigger fish in a smaller pond. Yeah. So the interest grows because now you're like, oh, I'm winning. You know, I'm winning all the nationals and my part of the continent. Then you go compete in your continent. You do well on your continent. You're like, wow, this this can really work for me. And then first time you go to Europe or the States, you're like, whoa, I need <laughs> Different. <laughs> need a few more reps. Yeah. Dad, I'm coming home. We need to practice some more. Yeah. You know? But I think that's good. So I think there's there's positives to it, but I think it, it's tough. Yeah. I mean, you guys know lack of wild cards opportunities. Um, if you had thirty tournaments a year in your hometown at the club you grew up, things would be different. Yeah. yeah. Life probably a little bit different for you. Yeah. Like, uh, same for you. Yeah. You know. Sure. And if I could play um, thirty tournaments a year in Zimbabwe in altitude on the court, staying at home, or just driving two hours here, driving two hours there makes a huge difference yeah so um i think it's yeah it's tough but um is what it is yeah you know not to go too deep into this like i don't even know what to call it this tennis structure trench but like the wild cards thing to me is tough because especially now that i'm playing doubles um around 330 i can squeeze into challenges sometimes if i find a partner high enough but for the most part i have to play futures and I have to win more futures so right now on my on my countables I've won maybe seven futures I think maybe six seven eight I don't know something like that but I still feel like I need to win maybe two or three more yeah. to be able to get high enough to get into futures all the time and, sorry into challenges all the time and what I don't have access to is wild cards like like yeah, some your, your pathway you know? is, is like that yeah I mean, you got to go through it and there's no there's no yeah. handouts there's no freebies if you were Italian, where they have 35 challenges a year, probably you're in wild cards yeah. to half of them. They still even have yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, you know, and like yeah. credit to those players, they still have to go and win the matches. No, you know, they have to still go and prove themselves at that level. But it's it's about to me, it's about opportunity. And that's, I think that's why I think, I think you know I resonate tough. that that feeling that you had because I mean not to get sidetracked, but like when I when I finished college, uh, um, you know. I'll just speak myself as an example. And there's other players from, you know, guys like you from different countries as well who share the same thing. But, you know, I finished NCA's top 10. I was pumped, whatever. I was, my year when we graduated was crazy stacked. If you go back and look at it, um, McKenzie McDonald, Giron, Nari, Eubanks. I mean, I'm forgetting so many names, man. Um, but, you know, and I was, I was beating those guys, you know? And I mean, obviously they're good players. And we finished college, and I would say to be like, to be fair, we were maybe some were better than me, but not by far, and maybe I was better than others, but not by far. You kind of all in that group, yeah. and I felt like I, you know, after that, I got really frustrated, and it affected me because I saw all these guys just getting wild cards into challenges, into Grand Slam qualities, getting grants, you know, a lot of being able to travel with the coach, and I had to go to. Sharm El Sheikh Monastir. You came at the wrong time, bro. Right now they have. I know, I know that this, which is a great initiative. Yeah. I think that's so good what they're doing because it's it's not enough, but at least it's an option, mm. you know. And I think uh, it provides um, players. I mean, I really so many guys are doing well off it yeah. now, you know. So yeah, I, mean, I think the, it's a very good initiative from the college. Uh, yeah. For the viewers who don't know, it's basically if you finish within a certain ranking in in Division One in NCAA's you get access to wild cards and to, I think, some of futures and some of challenges. Is that true? I, I don't oh, know. Yeah, but I think and there's a good amount of challenges that I know. I know. Yeah, top 10 or top 20, you get about maybe eight eight, or eight, eight, yeah. eight attempts in main draw, yeah. Yeah. which that's is a good. lot, man. That's good. I hope they keep that up because that's a good... Uh, and like you said, these players are doing well. Like. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's great. The more, the more, I think the more options players have, it's just better for the whole ecosystem. Yeah, it's true. Like, hey, guys, quick break. Justin here from The Changeover. I'm going to talk about Pro Stringer. It's a great machine that I use, Jody uses, and a lot of other pros use as well. You can use it at home, on the road, really anywhere there's a tabletop surface. 
It takes me about 25, 30 minutes to string a racket on this machine. It is easy to travel with, fits in carry-on, suitcase, tennis bag, no issues at TSA. It's a big money saver. And you can save even more when you use our code CHANGEOVER to get $100 off the machine. Back to the episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, let's get into some interesting topics. So let's do it. The first one, uh, let me make this big screen here. So the first one I want to talk about is match fixing. Okay. So recently there were a couple of, couple of players who were banned. Um, Jorge Panta, pursuant to section H1A of the TACP, is ineligible to participate in any sanctioned events for a period of three years, starting April 4th and ending on April 3rd. A- April 4th of this year, ending in 2027, and he's fined $10,000. And Alejandro Mendoza, um, same thing. But his ban is for a lifetime, and he has a fine of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Get out of here, man! <laughs> <laughs> how, I'm wondering how, how, you, how do you pay that off. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Let me ask you a question. You have to guess. I'm sure there's an explanation. But if you had uh-huh. to guess, what do they say? Two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and you got monthly payments until no, no. I think they kingdom come or what? Or how do they? Oh, how do they pay yeah, it off? No clue. No clue. How, I would imagine that he's gonna try to say so he's retired and he's not. I think that's what he did. So so apparently in the case, they break it down. Nah, I'm not going to read through the whole case. I'm not a lawyer. But like, I think Mendoza's case was that he's retired from tennis anyway. I believe that Panther's case was that he's still a player. So I don't know. I, I believe that the penalties was based on what they did on the offenses. And it's not fully clear of exactly what they did. But like, personally, I don't feel any sympathy for any of these guys. No, I think, you know, we all... As competitors and professional athletes and it's just I think a responsibility comes with that you yeah. know and and you uh we're not here to sing out individuals and all of that but it's it's you want to keep the sport clean exactly in in all regards whether it comes to corruption whether it comes to doping you want to make it a play a uh, even playing field for everyone and you want to keep i think the most important is it's great that to win and to Earn a living from tennis, but I think more importantly, you want to keep the integrity of the sport for future yeah. generations. Yeah, I crazy. think it's a go on, go on. It was crazy. Is like what they got caught for the offenses is like not that much money. Like Panther made with two bets or whatever, he made around 5k. If we read it right, because I'm not sure that we read, I read it right, but there was like two offenses and it was like around five. Yeah, I think okay. it's I think it's public knowledge. So it, it, is, it, it is, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Mendoza made more than 10, but it wasn't like he made. At least what he got caught for. I'm not sure. Maybe he did it out of a few better bets that didn't get caught. Maybe. What is unreal at yeah. that? <laughs> maybe he's already paid out the 250k because he's a millionaire. Yeah, maybe he had a system that he didn't um, perfect until later on. I don't know. But you would think that people risking this, risking their dream, their life, whatever, that Dude, it, that's that it would the be thing, for man. big money. It's like, but it's, it's like, like small money. It, it, that's what blows my mind is that it's like... Yeah. We play tennis. You start playing tennis because you have a dream. Yeah. So it's like you're suddenly now putting a value on that dream. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's not a huge value. It's not it's a huge. Like, it's not yeah. a huge value. Yeah. And like it just, I just think that it's, it's just, in one in one sense you just like, you got you like like Jody said you feel no remorse or you sorrow for them. But then one and the other side is just sad, man. It's just like, you know, at some point in time, some people people believed in you yeah, yeah. gave their heart and effort into developing yeah, you for sure you know 100%. and i think that's what probably would hurt the most if i would imagine you know yeah. and i'm sure all these guys who get caught regret it instantly but damage is done you think they know. regret it i think so yeah i don't know i mean i don't you know i don't they made, yeah i mean i guess and and i don't i don't know I, I can't comment on their character but i was just uh, i mean you would you would think that yeah you know because it's it's a dream crushed no, exactly. have you ever been on court and thought like something's happening right now I mean, no really I, I, to be honest never i mean probably because what you said you looked at me and you're like this guy's locked in yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't go don't go near that guy he's gonna <laughs> he's thinking man my returns are so good he's hit four double faults in yeah. a row. <laughs> This guy's locked in. Don't even walk near him. Yeah. <laughs> so no, 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 I never had any. I mean, okay. thank goodness, but yeah. Okay, to play devil's advocate, and I do not believe this at all. Yeah. But, um. Do you think it hasn't part of the reason for guys taking that risk is that they don't make enough money at the lower levels of professional tennis, or do you think they'll do this no matter what, even if they get to the top? Because there's other instances of other athletes in different sports that yeah. are at the top. They're footballers, basketballers that they're still. 
You we were, we were, I think we were, we were talking, we were practicing the day, we were talking about cricket, you know, West mm -hmm. Indies and Zimbabwe yeah. being cricket nations and all of that stuff. And growing up and even, you know, just, I, I love cricket and you see the huge scandals in cricket and I think it just shows you it transcends to all sports. And the, the betting industry, I'm sure, provides a huge amount of revenue and for our sport, which then trickles down into more tournaments mm -hmm. and Thing like the ITF have done a great job upgrading tournaments to 25s, adding more in underrepresented regions, you know. So all of that's coming from somewhere, yeah. you know. And it's so good that we have an injection of cash and money going into our sport because that's what we need. At the end of the day, we need more money in the sport. But whenever there's money involved, people always are opportunists, <laughs> you know. So yeah. I think you, you have to clamp down on it and... um yeah, hopefully, hopefully it gets to a point where it's so minimal that um, it doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's crazy. It's oh. crazy though, to be honest. <sighs> What's yeah. funny is that, like, it, it said, like, there was no way for them to reduce Panther centers because he completed the. You know, like every year they do those. Uh, oh, the there's like a survey, the, the like, corruption, it's so, an education program yeah. that we have to do. Oh uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think yeah. He, he completed it every it. year. <laughs> So he, so he was aware every time we was going. <laughs> no, no, no. But let's not act like this man didn't know what he was doing. No, no, he didn't. Like, sure. Come on. But I thought it was funny. Everyone knows. Like, you you know as a tennis player, you can't bet on matches and throw yeah. matches. and all. You can't, like, affect but the But we all heard the, the stories. Like, I knew about Mendoza before this. Yeah. Game. I mean, I heard rumors. I didn't know about I Panther, didn't know for a rumors. fact, but I heard rumors. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Um, next topic. So... You just mentioned a second ago the about the prize money increase from fifteen to twenty five. Do you know they're yeah. increasing it again next year? Yeah, um, is, is it uh, it's fifteens to twenties and twenty fives to thirties? So the prize money at the two entry level categories are going to be raised an additional five, uh, five million dollars. Is that what it says? Yeah, yeah, injection. Okay, I think yeah. So, yeah. So, so it's going to be, be instead of fifteen k's, it's going to be twenty k's. Instead of twenty five k's, it's going to be thirty k's. So, um. You know, I actually, um, uh, my brother is on the panel. He represents Africa. So yes. he goes into all these meetings. Sure. And uh, mm -hmm. what what he's told me is that the, the World Tennis Tour Department there in the in the ITF offices, they're, they're pushing so hard. And um, they're, they're, I think they've done a great job, man. They've, they're trying to get more tournaments to different parts of the world um, and increasing the prize money and... Um, I tell you, like the small changes which are actually big is like the ball change now. Now it's nine eleven in twenty um, nine eleven, yeah, in twenty five yeah. k's instead of eleven thirteen. Yeah, real. And dude, it's two different worlds when you play <laughs> one week eleven thirteen on clay with head xt balls, and then you're going to a challenger and it's six balls in play seven nine. And the only game you're kind of stressing out your serve is at like three three. Yo, I felt like know? in Bogota the balls are new the whole time. Yeah, yeah it's new <laughs> the whole time. So <laughs> for challenges for the first time, it's so easy to also. It's so easy to hold. Yeah, dude, not that yeah, I, the ball stays not that You remember your first only, match. You remember your first match in your challenge, you come out there and you're tight and whatever, you know, and suddenly you're just rocking down serves. And you're like, damn, dude, my serve is huge, you know? And well, you go back, yeah, and it's like it's the 12th just, game, and you're just barely rolling the serve in. Not, your serve, not to bro, break your it's shoulder. Six balls in play, and then yeah. every seven and nine games, you get yeah, new balls. It's new ball every time. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. So I think that what they did with the 9 11 is great. And uh, this, I, I hope they keep improving. The prize money and the conditions for players and um yeah, just it's just good to see the whole tour getting better. Yeah. For you. I would say. All right. The last one is so ATP tennis data innovations and sport radar have teamed up to launch Safe Sport, a new service to address online abuse targeting professional players. Um the new service will be available to the top two hundred and fifty ATP singles players and top fifty ranked doubles players mm -hmm. starting this month, which was might have been last month or this month yeah last month so do we have any thoughts on atp safe sport uh for those of you who don't know we're, we're every match we play the i guess betters in our dms and we just get cursed out non-stop in our dms on our posts like i'm sure if you go to any professional they go they go after your family yeah yeah loved it's, ones it's crazy yeah it's crazy like um yeah, personally, I think it's a good initiative. I just don't understand why they were just limited to only 250 players. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Like, uh, like the, 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 article, the, the rest of you guys 251. Don't need, yeah. 251. 251. I hope 251, your mother no. dies. In it's the cancer. article, it says that the AI that's doing it already um, supports 750 million users across like 
five platforms or whatever. So why can't we just support like everybody who has an ATP membership should just get? No, I do two fifty one. You're not. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no, you don't get AI. You can't do that. No, no AI. Two fifty one. You're a monkey. You deserve to be in a hole. Eat shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. I mean, we we get them every single match. Um, you know, but I've gotten to the point where. I don't even read them. I literally just like yeah, swipe lift, yeah, yeah. block, message yeah, yeah. gone. If I had to go on my phone and I'll show you my block list, we'll just be going yeah. like, we're we'll just going like this and like weird usernames from like, you know, yeah. all Did over I ever the go in your, in your comments under your photos? Uh, sure. No, I, I, I changed, I like, I changed everything. I put private profile. Oh, private. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just don't want to deal with that. Uh, yeah it's a long day sometimes but like, it's a long day and then <laughs> normally normally you'll be fine you're just like oh it blows over but when that one day where you're just pissed man you lost this match and you just like you ever respond you're just like dude actually no i've never responded but i'll tell you a funny story you know akira sentinel yes. yeah okay so last year in san luis potosi challenger and i'm watching his match and he's playing and he should win this match and I lo- akira i love you bro but he like he literally shat the bed on this match you know and he's he's he, he, he just didn't play well. He's a sick tennis player. So talented. Good friend of mine. And uh, he loses this match. He should never lose. Comes off the court. And I'm like, ah, oh, Aki, sorry, man. And he's pissed. And he's just got his phone out. And I just see him furiously just annihilating his phone. <laughs> just like, like, and I'm like, oh, damn. Like, this might be a text to his dad or his mom. You know, like, straight off the match, heated, whatever. And it's a better saying like, oh, you suck. And I'm going to come find you. And I can't believe. Her, and I watched you play. And he's talking about, where are you? Come now. <laughs> and I'm like looking at this guy like, dude, we're, we're in Mexico. Like, like maybe this is organized, you know? Yeah. Like, you don't, don't be dabbling with these guys, you know? And then the don't guy, the, the guy responds and he says, court nine. And like, no, court nine's no, down no, there. No. I swear, I'm like about to grab a kid. Kira just storms off, walking there. Like, walking and he gets, gets to court nine. And then he's, I, I'm like walking and I'm going to go the other way. I don't want to be involved in this. And he's like, I'm here. Where the hell are you? And I'm like, dude, the guy's not going to come. Akira waited like 20 minutes for the guy. No. <laughs> yeah. So the guy was there. Really? The guy was on they site. Met? No, no, no. He was on site, but he was like pointing on Akira's like uh, clothes and and no like, worries. yeah. And he's like, I'm at court nine. And how, how would he know? Like court nine's on the corner. And This is the worst, bro. So it, 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 in that sense, it was funny because yeah, it, it was Akira and Akira probably would have slammed, slammed the guy. That's not true. Nothing happened. <laughs> yeah. But what's crazy is that the guy was there on site. You know, yeah. I always thought these and uh, these abusers and stuff were like yeah. worlds away. You know, I've seen and it before. You, you'll be in like I've seen it in Spain. I was playing in. I saw it in Florida. Maybe Marta. One of those tournaments, like, and it's f- the, the stands are full, and they don't uh, and they're cheering for people and they're cheering for people who are not Spanish. It's like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah. What's yeah. going on yeah. here? Yeah. I didn't just pick up twenty yeah. fans today. Yeah, but then, yeah. The, then the police show up and they kick them out. Uh, yeah, yeah, bro. I remember there was. What year was it? Maybe 2018. I was in England with Ronnie Schneider. Yeah. And he got a message from a better and they offered him money. Like first the the better followed him and it just looked like a normal profile. It looked like a boxer or something, like a, an athlete. And he said like, oh, saw you today. Like, good job. So Ronnie just thought he was a normal person and maybe responded, thank you. I believe is how it went. And then the next message was like, sent a money value if you could do this da, da, da. oh well, my he gosh had to go, he had to go and report it it took him a long time that are you feeling about that questions. that you have to report if someone sent you that message then it does like that's know. necessary like now I, I have to be in dealing with this for the next three weeks because somebody yeah. sent me a message <laughs> no I, that, that's annoying like, I him, feel like I would, you know the problem, know, is, the problem is is if you get this invitation from a profile and then you report it and they have to delete the profile they just make another profile and just do the shit again but know? why is it always on me now that i have to report some guy i know it's like extra work, work you know yeah, why do i have to do work now <laughs> i didn't do nothing wrong bro <laughs> was... i existed and he texted me yeah. it's the laws of our sport man it's just uh... you just hope that you're never in that position you know? i wonder how it is in other sports like if they have to report it or all oh, that stuff works like because for sure these guys People bet on NBA and NFL and MLB all the time. For sure, these guys are getting approached too. I'll yeah, I course. mean, I think they hire they, they hire these, AI, these guys. For these, sure. yeah. They don't have to pay the AI. <laughs> no, no, no AI for these guys. Not good enough. Yeah. No, hear me on something though. Do you think that uh, referees should get fined or some sort of like strike policy for bi- un- like bad performance? Because dude. This guy, this ref had like three instances in the last two weeks. The guy who did um, 
Felix and Jacob. Dude, Masters wild. Week. That is absolutely wild. Like, that needs Wait, to be discussed. He messed up with this one. He messed up with Fritz. And then debatable if he should have defaulted Chapo. Chapo is on the edge there. Yeah, I don't know. I think can, that's... that's. You a, can debate that one. You can debate that one. But the other two with Fritz and then with Felix, bro. Dude, I, and the Fritz now you lose crazy. the match. The Fritz is the worst one. Like, I, I, no, no, no. No, Felix. Felix. Felix, Felix. Okay, it, the situation of match point is horrible, but like... The referee to make a judgment call, I feel like Draper was balling on the left side of his body. The referee's on the right. Like, I don't know if he had a clear view of it or not, but, like, I understand if a referee makes a bad call in that situation. It's tough timing, bro. Dude. I, I agree that we need, like, a replay system or something. Bro. 100%. I, think... I can't, like, hold the referee too accountable for that one. But the, the, the other one with, like, I don't understand how the first one happens. It's like the ball was out, and he stopped the point. The referee stopped the point. Because of a technological error or whatever, it's like the ball is out, you know? You're not stopping anything. The ball is out. Yeah, yeah. Like it's done. The point is done. I think that, uh, you know, that 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 Felix and Draper thing is and such, a, replay. such a hot, Why are we hot just topic right there. Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. I agree with that. I'm not... I'm Dude, not it's, it's an upset. iPad. It's an iPad locked in there. He just looks at it for 10 seconds. Yeah, sorry guys, made a mistake. Um, yeah. Change his call. But he, what's wild is there's what Felix said at the net, like first of all, Props to Felix, like the guy had with that situation. Nice, Way too nice, probably. I don't that wouldn't think... have been Ben Lock there. I tell yeah, you that. Shit fly. <laughs> no, no. That wouldn't have been Ben Lock. There's, there's, there's no hug after that. I'm not, I'm not hugging my opponent like, yeah, yeah, it's not your fault, man. Like, no, Dan, straight. You know it's your fault. Yeah. Like, you can tell as a tennis player when you've hit the shot clean or not. Yeah. There's no way. You know when you're getting to a double bounce or not. Dude, uh, I'm not saying that it was like Jack's, um, it was his place to concede the point but dude he knows yeah that, that's the bottom line he knows felix knows people who know tennis and watching the ball doesn't fly like that it's different and i mean only, the, it seemed like the only guy who didn't see it so clearly was the chair umpire and is the only opinion that matters yeah that so sucks. i think but it was for me as while i went and watched that again is not everyone's watching kind of the shot and you know draper kind of doing the follow through like get over the net you know because he's like missed lost the point really yeah. and you saw that right yeah for me as well is Felix. If you watch Felix, he returns, sees it, turns around. He's yeah, almost looking for his deuce. box. His back is turned and he's like, I'm back in this. Yeah, you know, like, like I've said. Deuce. And then suddenly he just hears something and you just see him like. Like there's no way this is happening right now. That feeling. <laughs> the look on his feeling, face was like, you know I've been what, robbed. You know when someone you know? smiles, but there's nothing funny about it? You yeah. Know? That's me every day. <laughs> <laughs> Felix was smiling, but it's not anything funny. Oh, joyful about what just happened. So, what do, like about, what do you think feeling. about what do you think about the ref? Should he should he be on like a probation or like, a strike policy? There or? should be like something to do with performance. I'm sure they have that. I'm sure they have that. He yeah. should play next. He should be next week here and other people with us, like nah, doing bro. duty or something, brother. That's <laughs> bad. No, no, no. He's bro. at three. Oh, okay, okay. I guess the package of overall. But then again, like, is he just following orders? Like, is that just the rule book? Is it the referee's fault or is it the rule book's fault? You know, because he can't just say what I hate is that is that he, he goes, say, if he, I'm wrong, I'll just come to you and tell you that I was wrong. I'll apologize. Who cares? Bro? I really lost. Yeah, but I, I think it's tough, tough position for him because he can't just say, oh, we're not allowed to look at video, but I'm making a decision. Hey, guys, put up on the Jumbotron. Let's just see if it hit the ground first or, you know, I think the but what the, is he looking isn't at? Isn't it strange that like what if you're watching at? TV, they're showing the replay constantly but and in the, in the stadium, stadium they're, they're not showing it. it. Yeah. Like that's why you say because just, they know because they you, know the referee's gonna look up and see that it's the wrong call and he's not allowed to overchange it, you know, like overturn it or whatever. Like, and I think the 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 most comical thing is the the supervisor coming out. I mean, I, I know that supervisor. I think it's Roland, but anyway, he's a great supervisor. But he's coming out there cold, blind, hasn't seen a thing, doesn't know anything, and all he's gonna say is, "I have to, uh, agree, I have to agree with what he's saying." Yeah. If you want to talk on my it's office, a waste come. Of time, yeah. Why is he even out there? It's a waste of time. You know, it's a complete waste of time. I don't know how, like, many, I don't know how many tennis players, even if that happened to, let's just say, the big three are meant to be the icons of our sport, how, if they would have handled it like Felix. No chance. <laughs> no chance. Yeah. No chance. I don't want I to hate... be too harsh on the referee, though, to be honest. Like, so maybe, what, maybe okay, you're you saying the ref was the... blinded, so then what is it? The... I'm not saying for sure. I'm saying. But is I'm... it the responsibility of the player to then say, because I saw a Absolutely video today not. in the US Open final. Casper Ruud versus Alcaraz, 4-3 in the first set. The winner of that match was number one in the world. That was a huge match, both playing for their first slam. And it was 
break for Alcaraz. They're playing first point of the game, and Root it gets to a drop shot. It's clear double bounce, hits it, goes over. Alcaraz is like looking for the call, doesn't happen, shanks the ball, hits it into the net, and the ref gives the point to Root. Okay, I don't think there's a for those guys in that point in their life, there is no bigger match. Yeah, you know they are playing for the number one in the world, first title, final of the U.S. Open, night session, Arthur Ashe, and Rude is down a break. He needs every point he can get, and he it's just goes. A picture right now. And he just goes, <laughs> and he just looks at Alcaraz losing it, going to the ref. No, 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 no. Talking in you know, it's broken English at the time, and and Casper's like, no, no, it was double bounce. Don't worry, it's your point. Class. You know, like, but it shouldn't be on his. It shouldn't be on his. Like that's absolute class of sportsmanship, but it shouldn't be on his. But I'm saying, I'm saying, like, of course, it's not a match point, but there was no bigger occasion yeah. for Casper in his life up until that point. And when he was pressed yeah. for his ethics, he was like, it's "Real nah, character." Yeah, I, 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 I didn't get to the ball, and I'm going to give it. You know, and Alcaraz's face shocked. Ref was like embarrassed and like, yeah, man, I, I just feel like. That whole ending, Felix and Draper didn't go down well. Man. No, it wasn't. Man, I don't like, sorry, that refs, even when they know they're wrong, they never just say it. Dude. I don't know if they're allowed to. I don't know if they're allowed to. Bro, like, I was in Paraguay playing Davis Cup. I hit like a, like a, I can probably find this video. I hit a ball inside or, or across, I can't remember now, on the line, in between the service line and the baseline. He called it out or dip. The person didn't really call, and then he called it out from the chair. I don't know how he saw it out from the chair, but whatever. He comes out on the far side, looking between the service line and the baseline, doesn't see your mark, and just walks to like a serve mark on the thing and, call, and gives me the, the serve mark as, as does my, my baller hit cross. Like he just found a mark that fit his story. So he just pointed to a random serve mark. And then I, I had him the next day, he made a bad judgment call about. Like, the guy was playing, stopped playing. But then he he stopped playing. And something happened where it made me stop playing. And I lost the point. Those are horrible calls. Right? The, the half the half step, like, into the stop. Because then, like, I think tennis is such a rhythm sport. Like, one half step throws off the whole rhythm of the whole point. So, like, mm-hmm. how do you argue those calls? Fuck did, you lose then, the, did you lose the point in Paraguay? Yeah, I lost the point. And I lost the point. <laughs> no, 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 no. Lost the point, lost the tie. <laughs> Without a group, everything, everything. Oh gosh! Then, oh. Lost the match. Lost then the group. After the match, it's all the ref's fault. After the match, I wouldn't say it's all his fault, but it, it didn't happen in the moment. After the match, I'm talking to the man, and I'm telling him what's happening. And then the guy I was playing, Blaze, said, "Justin's right. I did stop playing for that reason." After the match. After the match, he said, "Yeah, he was right." And the guy says, "Yeah, I'm sorry." And I said, "You know what? I you were wrong the other day too. I'm gonna show you a video." And then, <laughs> and then you're doubling down. Then, then I came here with the video. He said, "No, no, I went back and watched it, and I, and you were right." And he just said, "I'm sorry." I said, "Yeah, sorry. Sorry is good." Man. You were mad about that then? If you still mad, right? but like, yeah, he's human, dog. He's human. I probably, he, I just, he probably. I, he, I was so upset that he's a repeat offender. Like he's just oh, okay. like <laughs> he's just out here messing up matches. And, like it's big moments. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, dude, it's hard, man. When, when the same, only has me the when shrug, the same, you know, with, the same chair umpire. Does you wrong a couple times in a row, especially that... I know those Davis Cup uh, group formats they're brutal and it's stressful. Yeah, yeah, and when you get sure. back to back tough calls, you're it's already a stressful environment. It's the last thing you want, man. Match Drive you crazy. Match, the same guy, just no. give me the shrug. I am sorry. Yeah, yeah, tough, tough. Yeah, you're sorry, but next year I'm in Trinidad and go for it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot, <laughs> we're working. No, yeah, I, I just think I think it's the referee thing is tricky though because I believe. I don't know exactly how it is, but it is some sort of system for them to earn the rank to play. Yeah, they, they can go to up, go but can up. they go down is what I want to know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> because if I win points. this tournament this year uh-huh. and I come back next year and I lose in the first round, I lose 25 points and probably a decent amount of rank. Yeah. Where is your like evaluation? You were like, performing how do you, how well you, before and now you're falling you off. To, you, need to, you need to keep your standard. Like if your eyes get worse, you should not be at the same tournament. They so must you, have that, right? You Surely know, I, I, there's, a, there's, a, there's actually um, a rule I found out. So you can actually go to a um, supervisor before the tournament starts and you're like, what, you get the little chit chat out of the way. Hey, how are you? You don't really care, but you're just like, hey, how are you? Whatever. <laughs> but um, hey, uh, I'm aware this chair umpire is here at the tournament. Um, I don't feel comfortable with him on the court. Please 
if possible, can you avoid him from my matches? If it's not possible at all and he's I don't know, the key ref and he's from the country and they want him to do the final and you're playing the final, you can't avoid that, you know? But when there's many matches and especially a combined event, you're allowed. I didn't know this. I only found out you're allowed to go and say, please don't put a ref on my court. I've heard the doubt of this with uh, Carlos Bernardes. That's right. I heard that that right. guy. He doesn't like yeah. it. <laughs> so you can only do that before the tournament starts. You can't do it like mid-tournament? You can. But probably the damage is done already. Bro, so I you want to get ahead of the game. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late. was it, bro? I think it was... Was it Ricardo? There was someone in... Uh, in Oklahoma, beginning of Oklahoma last year, there was a ref making just horrid calls. People freaking out. And they went and reported him. And the next day, he was just there. Like, like exactly what you said. You're going to report him. Please don't have him on my match. And first, first like, 10 o'clock the next day, boom. Him. Yeah. I can't remember who no it was. No way. I can't remember who it was. But it was in Oklahoma, the indoor tournament last year. <laughs> but, you know, the, the, the ATP supervisor told me that is an actual rule. Like, you are allowed to do that. And it's confidential. And the supervisor can, because it's not, you're not saying about the ref's performance. You're saying that on court, you don't feel comfortable with him. Mm, that's the key word. He's the, I don't feel comfortable. He didn't use the right words. Yeah. Because yeah, if you're yeah. not comfortable with the ref and it means you feel like you can't talk to him or every time you try to talk to him, he snaps yeah. back at you, brings his ego and all that yeah. stuff. Like then there's no empathy or maneuverability and you can't like, it's a ref. It's not a judge. You know, okay. so I already found that out this year, so I'm definitely gonna be using that at tournaments. <laughs> There's a couple of riffs out list. there, I'm, yeah. Like there, I just think I think it's just it's a thankless job, a referee. Like even when because okay, if a referee does bad, 99 percent of the time the player's gonna let him know he did shit. But when the referee has a good match, no one says good. No job, one buddy. says good. Job. So like that's what <laughs> true. I I try to do that sometimes. Like even if they make one or two mistakes, like that's a good, good day. Guy, that's a good day to me. I try. Yeah, to do that great cause... guy here, huh? Guy. Great guy in the middle. Hey, yeah. what can I say? You know, <laughs> I was raised right. You know what I mean? <laughs> but if you can help us solve this uh, ref issue, put it in the comments. <laughs> I don't know. Um. Okay. So let's go. We asked Instagram some questions. So the first one is from BSK on Instagram, Ben. Thoughts on missing out on the on the Olympics after losing in the African Games, yet players with way lower rankings managed to play singles. Just put a knife in the guy's heart, dude. Yeah, dude, this is. Oh man, this is, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, no, no it's good. This is. This by, is not me. Hey, this, this was not me. by far the. The guy turned red. That's this not is me. by far. Yeah, man, this was by far the hardest loss I had to swallow in my life by a long way. Like, first of all. Mm. We were in we were in Ghana in the, the African Games. It's like I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit, but well above a hundred. Okay, it was ridiculous temperatures, ridiculous conditions, insane difficult. There was a one twenty eight draw played over seven days. One twenty eight. One twenty eight draw played over seven continent. days. Africa, a huge continent, fifty four countries. So like everyone's there ripping their flag, and you've got to play these matches and. It is just the conditions are so tough. And like by the time you even get to the quarters, dude, you've played a tournament itself. And then you, you're, you're like, damn, I'm only in quarterfinals, you know? And you're playing singles and doubles every single day. And it was just like battling through all these matches. You get to the final and it's just like, it's all or nothing, man. That's, that's, that was the hardest thing for me is like, I had to go and sleep and I was like, right, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and tomorrow's either going to be real saddest day in my tennis career so far because growing up watching the olympics you just dream about being an olympian okay or i'm going to make history tomorrow that's like the literally the last thing i'm thinking about before going to bed now i'm closing my eyes like it's either tomorrow is one of those days you like it or not privileged to be in the position but it's either going to be a day ending in tears or a day where you celebrate it yeah, like tears. A, yeah. <laughs> tears or tears yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're, you're a hero for your country you know, and probably a once, not once in a lifetime, but the chances are are slim. And yeah. then you get another chance. The tennis like that. draw is small for how big the Olympics is. So, so already draw. just the pre-qualifying for for the Olympics was just like so brutal. And, you know, I remember that match so clearly and it came down to three sets and I got absolutely robbed by the ref. Oh, um, yes. Two games in a row. I mean, unbelievable. <laughs> you got to um, fix this thing, man. I'm telling you. Actually, I played Moez Echagi from Tunisia and... I'm buddies with all the Tunisians. We grew up together and he's a great guy. And, you know, I was also happy for him in a strange way. I was happy for him, but... You seem, it. You um, seem pretty you happy. You seem super happy. <laughs> uh, yeah. they, they, I mean, they give you a shrug? Um, um, for the guys. You know, he, he, great, great guy. I, I, knew, I knew how difficult it was to get that spot. Okay. And, but, 
both like um, Skander Mansuri and Aziz Dugas were there and they came to me after the match and was like, dude, I'm so sorry, man. Like, you literally got robbed on two games. You know, and um, not saying I would have won the match, but, you know, it was, it was a terrible way to finish the match. Okay. So anyway, had to get over that. Didn't sleep properly for like a month. Um, couldn't even talk about it with my family. Um, my brother didn't even want to bring it up. Every time there was some ad about Olympics in Paris, it just ruined my day. Like, no it really bothered me a lot, rough, you know? So, but it was okay. It is what it is. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I, found, I found ways to get over it. And then I just, as the Olympics are approaching, um, I'm just seeing these pullouts, you know? And I'm just seeing like this list dropping and I'm like, Okay, Don't well, laugh. I'm like, no, 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 it's actually funny. I'm like, okay, well, well, sh <laughs> well, well, shit. I mean, I, I'm, I'm an alternate because I came second yeah. for the continental games. Is that an official thing? I mean, for that spot only, you know. But I'm like, okay, oh, okay. I, I, I'm second. And the crazy thing is, there was only one African in the whole draw. Okay, and they had the Olympics. You know, the, I, I think, I think the, the. The ITF department of the Olympics who handle these Olympic games, I think they should just fire everyone. <laughs> Honestly, I think they were just so shit. Like, and they were shown up by so many people embarrassed of how the games went in the pre-rounds. It all ended great. Alcaraz, Djokovic finals. Sick. But, sick. But first <laughs> rounds, first rounds, we're playing guys who haven't yeah. played a singles match in like six years. We Dude. had yeah. City Bus, Petros. Not not Stephanos. I think Petros played on uh, Ebden. Ebden played. Dude, yeah, all the guys. I want to say this so these guys don't get offended. All the guys at the Olympics there, whatever you're for, singles or doubles, mixed, whatever. Unreal. If you're there, you deserve to be there. Unreal, but yeah. play your event. Don't be dabbling in other events. But that's like, not that's, up to them. Is it up to them? No, it's a poor, poor policy that they don't have an alternate list. Yeah. Because I know so many players that would cut off their left arm to that's be at the Olympics. Say. <laughs> <Yeah. not> <laughs> Their left arm. <laughs> Don't listen to this guy. Left arm. Left arm. Hopefully you're right handed. Yeah. But left arm to, to, to be this. there. About like it's they were crazy. saying they were saying like logistics and all this stuff. And I was like, yeah, bro, they must they must be able to figure out some sort of way because like again, like respect to Ebden, unreal player. Sick. But like you know, <laughs> like I'm sure there were many players that that in the 100, 200, 300, I don't know what ranking, but there are players there that could have they could have gotten the opportunity to play the Olympics as well. You Dude, know? if you've got so many alternates pulling out and you've got, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how many guys, if they got a text or an email saying, hey, you're in for the Olympics and they were halfway across the world. that Jump on a flight and just swim. Like, swim there. This is literally, yeah. Yeah, I go on, I'll go on the once, boat. Once in a lifetime. Yeah. yeah, it's once in a lifetime. Literally. And to see guys playing the singles draw who had no business being there, I, no disrespect to their tennis level, but they had no business being in that yeah. draw. And it's a 64 draw. Why is a 64 draw? Grand Slams are 128. Doesn't make sense. Make it a 96 draw if you want to keep it so elite. But the the, the ITF and the Olympics was so caught up on making this such an elite <clears throat> thing. I mean, I heard the craziest story and you, at your games. You guys were at the Pan Am Games, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Craziest story there is Fukuna Diaz Acosta won it, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Gold medal ranked at the time of the Olympics closing 58 in the world doesn't go. It didn't go? No, because there were, f there were four other Argentinians higher than, him. higher than him. So what's the point of the games? That's ridiculous. I didn't know that. Ridiculous. So, I know at that time, so that he, guy, like, he was like winning matches like left, right, and center. Like I'm pretty sure he won like two ATPs right after that. Dude, put yourself in, in that guy's shoes. Sit there. You're the gold medal for your continental games. Pan Am you games. Gold medal, first of all, is a ticket, one-way ticket to go there straight yeah. away. Second... You're 58 in the world or 60. God forbid I missed by two or three ranking spots and they're going to shout at me, no, he's 61, not 58. Whatever his ranking was, it was around there. It was high enough. Yeah. And you don't go to the games. And then that guy has to sit wherever he is having dinner, watching guys who have zero business being in the draw, who can't even move two meters to their right or to their left, playing in singles of the Olympics. Ah, oh, dude, that's... That's just that's just a fuck up from the yeah. the, the Olympic Committee and ITF. That's rough. That's I don't care what you actually. say about yeah. yeah, man. Come on, I don't care what you say about um, 
maximum amount of athletes in the village and all that stuff. There's ways yeah, to get around it. There's some way to Put have like an alternative. Yeah. Novak was in the he was in the hotel. Novak he wasn't even in the village, bro. Yeah, yeah exactly. Guys Novak, there, bro. Some of the guys was in the hotel. That's bro. a spot right there. LeBron wasn't in the village. No, LeBron was definitely you, in USA the hotel. Basketball Come on, team, dog. What's that? Twenty five spots yeah. in the village. Come yeah, on, LeBron was in there. And I, I, I already think, think of it. Like and I love that Novak just blasted them. Like he did. Yeah, he said? he said right after the match against Ebden, he said, uh, I think it was the post, I and mean, I might have it wrong, but he said, respect to Ebden. And that guy was a great singles player. Yeah. I don't know his career, of 40 course. or 30 in the world. Yeah, very good guys, player. very good tennis player. Number one in the world in doubles. Sick tennis player. What he's achieved, I would give a lot to have that. So that guy's <laughs> the that left, arm, the left, arm. left arm. He might give two, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. two toes. <laughs> <laughs> two toes. <laughs> So, so we're not disrespecting that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Novak said, respect to Ebden, but I did not expect to play a doubles player first round of the Olympics. The hype for this thing, denying people like Diaz Acosta, making it so difficult to get into the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. You have to win your continental games and you have to be ranked top four in your country and you have to be top 50 in the world to go and this and that and that, whatever. And then suddenly, during the things, you're just handing, in, handing out Olympic single spots like yeah. it's... I mean, there's so many... You don't you don't want to say all well, the names of the guys there, but I think there were like seven players. Well, there were seven. Wow, well, I only heard about seven two. or eight. Seven or eight players who just are just way behind in the pecking order. Yeah, and I think like, all these guys didn't. They didn't even play the Olympic continental games. They didn't. So they didn't represent their country in the games. Or if they did, they weren't even medalists. They were not anywhere near the ranking criteria. They were just there because there was no one else. That's a shame. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like I, I think. And you want if to you throw a yourself, rule book? If at you that? put yourself in that position, if you're one of those players, how can you turn down that opportunity? Look at look but at I think uh, equally, uh, it's like they they need to be a different like. Look at Hadi Abib. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, um, um, Played Alcaraz, Ben right? Ben Nashville. Benjamin Hassan, who's a very good tennis player, got this um, universality spot for playing representing a country that's underrepresented in the Olympics: Lebanon, war torn, all this stuff. So there's there's a spot allocated to that. He got given a wild card for that. On the count of him getting a wild card for singles, they then pushed him like, well, he's there for singles. We want to give him doubles as well. Who's the next highest ranked player in Lebanon for du- and Hadi. singles or doubles? Hadi. So Hadi gets in on the account of Ben Hassan. Hadi being there is the highest ranked singles player on site after Vavasuri. So Vavasuri gets in and then next is Hadi. And all of a sudden from not being in the Olympics to your countrymen getting a wild card because your country's at war, to then playing doubles with him, to then playing on Suzanne Longlin against, against Alcaraz. Alcaraz. Yeah, amazing. Dude, that's wild. Yeah. yeah. That's a wild story. Great for Hadi. Love him. Great guy. Sick. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> but you ask all the other players who are one, two, three, four, five, yeah. six, seven spots out of the Olympics, ranked 70 in the world. Robbery. Pissed. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And maybe they will never play Olympics in their life. A rule book. I think it's got to be changed, man. I wonder how many, like in the other sports, how many athletes play. Because like I know, like for example, I actually swimming checked this. And... Swimming 800, oh, wow. 800 yeah, athletes. This guy's locked in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Benjamin locked. Like, I, know, I know like swimming. Mad, and... mad. I was Googling mad, angry. <laughs> like I was like, you know, fuck this, I, this whole Olympics. And this is bullshit. And I suffered in Ghana, like whatever. All this stuff. And I'm seeing they're just hammering it out. I know you were struggling because I felt FOMO and like, I was nowhere close to making the Olympics, obviously, but like I played the Pan Am and the CAC game. Yeah, this guy texted me the rack. I mean, the FOMO. I said, "What, bro? You had no chance to go anyway." <laughs> <laughs> it's like FOMO I was like sad. the boys down the road. They're going out. You didn't. You didn't go. But that's how I felt yeah. because I had like I had like other athletes from my country go in, and like I know the system. I know like the village, and you know, I know what it feels like to play for your country at a big event. Dude, and, I, and when you're from countries that don't have grand slams and master series and all this stuff the olympics is king yeah and huge. the opportunities that flow from the olympics backing grants you guys know the story yeah, yeah, exactly. you, you know how it is i stuff, just yeah. can't believe like I, I i already myself crushed and just upset angry sad couldn't believe it whatever now if so, i'm facundo diaz acosta yeah fuming yeah, I was someone need well, to come check on me. Well, BSK, you asked a great question. So, yeah. uh, next one. What's your favorite Tony of the year? This is from Patrick. Uh, tournament. tournament. Favorite oh, Tony, Tony of the year. Tony, show up a tournament, brother. I thought you said Tony. No, Tony. Okay, sorry. Um, two come to mind. 
mm, not I'm not going to do this based on results because we could play in the worst place possible. If you win the tournament, you're going to be happy. I'll just say tournament in general to come to come to mind. First would be Mexico City Challenger. No way. Yeah, they really? just do a great tournament. Okay. Um, it's so nice. The hotel's great. Why am I surprised? Actually, Mexico. They Mexico, do they do job. amazing yeah. tournaments. They had an amazing players party. Um, I think it's yeah, it's a great tournament. And the second one would be um, Kigali in Rwanda, because um, that's the first challenger we've had in. I would, I'm going to say Africa. I know there's one in Tunisia, but it's an hour flight from Europe and takes us two days to get there from Zimbabwe. So it's not really, you know what I mean? Okay. Like we had one actually in the heart of Africa, like nice. for us, you know, Kigali. And they gave my brother and I this insane villa suite with like a private... Um, Put it free? Yeah. For like like we, we we get there. This man talking about not getting wild cards, he's getting villas? Sick. I think of one to wild so we, got a, we, got a, we got a villa with this <laughs> heated pool. And it was funny because we rock up there and you know, you do this tennis uno booking. Yeah. And then it's happened to me so many times. I go to France and they're like, ah, oh, they confirm you in the nice hotel and you get there, chicken. No, sorry, you're staying in the B&B down the road, which is, you, know, you can't even open your suitcase in. Mm-hmm. You know, our guest is staying in the five star, you know? Okay. And they just chuck you to the side because they're like, ah, oh, Zimbabwean guy, no one will care. They just chuck <laughs> him, you know, whatever. We get to Rwanda, my brother and I, and then we get this message uh, from Tondrick, hey guys, sorry, um, can you come on site? And we talk about accommodation. And I'm like, I said to my brother, if they fucking move us in our own home tournament like and downgrade us from a Hilton hotel because the tournament hotel was a Hilton to some bad hotel just because they think we won't complain because they're from here and all this stuff I'm going to cause the biggest scene he's been hurt before huh? so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get just, there yeah, he's been to be on a podcast I get there I see, this, I see this tournament director and I'm walking in there I'm like you I'm ready I, no, I'm ready to do it I'm like in the ring gloves are on I'm ready to go and he's like yeah guys hotel's full but we're going to move you to um, this hotel and um yeah, King of England stayed there last year. I was like, oh, damn. Sure. We'll go there. We'll go there. No problem. <laughs> it's good enough for the King of England. Then. Good, good enough for me. <laughs> good enough for me. Yeah. But we had an amazing time there. So that's that's probably the best time of the year for me. Okay. Yeah. Next up is from Luke. Who are your loudest supporters? Uh, definitely uh, family, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just my family in general. They're very supportive. So it's a pretty easy one. Nice. Yeah. On tour, probably my brother because... We travel together, so mm. even though he takes heat on the sidelines sometimes, yeah, like yeah, that's fine. he takes some heat, but he, you know, we support each other good. So yeah, family. Yeah, shout out to him. Uh, yeah. That leads us into the next question from from Zvat: Is your prize singles or doubles? And what are your what are your goals with your brother? And how different is it to play with him versus other people? Mm, I compete equally in both. Love to play both events. So if I'm doing well in either event, I'm happy. And um, yeah, I try to to just blend the two i think it's it's important and um, playing with courtney yeah super fun uh we have a lot of um laughs we have a lot of fights as well playing who who gets the most upset on the court with the other no i definitely me i'm so hard on the guy yeah (laughs) like i'm I'm so hard on the guy and the guy is the guy is so mature man he's he just takes it so well he's like even when i'm so wrong sometimes i'll say something like damn actually i think i'm wrong you know he just he's he's a really really good uh good person and good partner and then we'll discuss it after the match but i'm a lot better now um <clears throat> with that but yeah i mean for us playing playing together <laughs> and and coming from zimbabwe where there's no pretty much no tennis we get a lot of support and i think it's people back home like to cheer for a team rather than individuals yeah. so it's really cool and the lock brothers yeah they yeah, have so. a thing you guys have like a yeah we talked about it a little bit the other day yeah and a really that. cool thing is we um this last davis cup we just played now um we won the africa group like the one you played in paraguay mm-hmm. and now we're in world group two and uh <clears throat> i knew we were playing the final doubles match and it rained out so we had to come out and play one set like a final set to see who qualifies and goes through and i knew that if Courtney and I won this doubles match, we we're going to break the record for the most wins of any doubles team for our country in Davis Cup history, okay? I didn't tell him. So, obviously, I'm fired up, want to get this one done. It's been a long record from these guys I told you, Byron and Wayne Black. They were both number one in the world in doubles, and they owned this record. And for us, growing up, they're our legends. You know, like, I achieve a tenth of what they did, I'd be happy. But um, as soon as we finished the match, I was serving an ace and I look at Courtney he's like 
it's done. And I'm like, yep, it's done. And I was like, and made history today. So that was a super, super special moment. That's cool. So yeah, so I mean, that's something it's, it's on the website, um, in the history books and never be taken away from us. So we're super pumped about that. Congrats, brother. Yeah. Uh, that's it for the Instagram questions. You want to run the game before we roll? So you guys got to play a game here. All right. Have you seen any of these or no? Gonna be, uh, no. First, first guy to get three correct answers. Jordy has number one. First guy to get three correct answers. Yes. Yeah, okay. He's going to ask a question. You just shut the answer out. Uh, you get it wrong. He has a chance to answer. And then you can both answer again. Uh, and yeah, let's see. See what you guys okay. do. I have to win eventually, right? If I have enough, like, Dude, you, rock, I, like, you shouldn't have told me he's never won. Now I feel tight. No, That's feel exactly tight. how I want you to feel. Yeah. That's exactly Because then you'll be like, oh, you know, Jody, course, oh, the course, only guy he ever beat on the Challenger of the podcast <laughs> is Ben. Yeah, yeah. That, that's like I'm going to interest the next time. All right, here we go. Come on. All right, question number one. What is the capital of Germany? Munich? Berlin. Yes. One zero to Berlin. <laughs> you watch Women's Tennis? Bro, you ask me that. I'm asking him. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay. Ready. True or false? Yelena Ostapenko this week is a top 10 women's, women's tennis player. False. False. Wow, 1 1. Let's go. Oh. All 50 50, brother. You couldn't have made it She's any 11. easier for me. She's 11. You couldn't have made it any easier. Are you reading my. No, I'm looking this way. She's 11 in the world. <clears throat> Who said it? And this is going to be a quote from a player. My tactic is to make my opponent suffer. Djokovic. Ah, oh, damn. So if he gets it wrong, I get to go again. Yeah. yeah. If I get it wrong, then we just go. Like, you can just. Yeah, yeah. I think I know who it is now. Yeah. It's pretty obvious, man. Yeah. My tactic is to make my opponent suffer. He's got to be on the clock, though, no? Rafa? No. Medvedev. Yes. Two, one. How's your mathematics? <laughs> You're the fucking worst, though. <laughs> How's your math? <laughs> you are the absolute worst. Let's though. check it. 43 minus 17. 43 minus 17. Oh my God, I'm cooked. Uh, damn, we're going to cut this one out. We both suck. Come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> 43 minus 17. Oh, 26. Yeah! <laughs> Dude, let's go. Come on, come on. Let's Yo, battle, battle, this battle. is the tiebreaker. Let's battle it. Okay. You saw me like this just now? All right, come on. Damn, I studied finance. It's come, on, come on, come on. True or false? Yes. Yes. Cam Nori has fallen out of the top 50. True. Is he correct? He's not. Yes. <laughs> I saw something that he's injured today, hey, no? Hey, yes. This week he is 47. No, no, no. Yes. Is that a Sunday or a Monday? Today. Today? Oh, man. You got me the technical. <laughs> yes. Yes. Today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Ben, thanks for coming out. Uh, it was a good episode. We enjoyed it. No, it was, so it was a lot of fun. Closing this quick. Thanks so much. Just to wrap this up, I have some celebrations to do. Sick. Um, <laughs> special thanks to Pro Stringer also by the way um, shout out to them if shout you, out to Pro Stringer shout out to Ruben and Pro Stringer yeah if you don't know you can get a Pro Stringer from the website save $100 on a machine um, what else we got for you we have some merch in the store and yeah let us know in the comments below if you like the episode uh, what you think we should talk about more often obviously then more thing Yes, also on Venmo too. So we'll, we have the Venmo link in the description below. If you want to help us with some editing costs, that goes a long way. Um, anything helps uh, us. We're literally like 15 episodes behind payment to Reese. So shout out to Reese also. For no exaggeration. Episodes. Yeah, no exaggeration. Um, but yeah, Ben, thank you for watching everyone. I mean, thank you for joining us. Everyone, thanks for watching. See you in the next episode.